What's up guys? Today we are going to be showing you a video on how to install our heavy duty steering linkage for Dana 60 front axles in OBS Fords. This video is extremely informative and it's imperative that you watch the entire thing through its entirety to make sure that you install the steering linkage correctly because it is different than other steering and for the safety of you and everybody else on the road, uh, just watch the full video. Now it's time to assemble the steering linkage. So this here is a stock set of steering linkage, Moog parts, and this stuff here is our heavy duty steering linkage that is designed to work with our coilover suspension kit as well, as far as drag link length goes. And it's significantly stronger and beefier than the stock stuff. The tie rod ends are way stronger, but it is a custom steering and it is very, very, very important that you follow the install instructions to a T to make sure that especially the tie rod ends at the knuckles fully seat and they don't back the castle nuts off. If you've installed steering linkage before, then you're the one that really needs to read the install instructions because there's a couple added steps that are very important for your safety and everybody else on the road safety. So we're gonna toss this. So first off, when you open everything up, make note that there are two different part number tie rod ends. You have three tie rod ends that are 4136s and they go to the knuckles and the pitman arm. And then you have one tie rod end that's a 4133 and it goes from the drag link to the tie rod itself. There's really, there's minor physical appearance differences that would take, you know, some micrometers to really know. So don't just open all of them and not have an idea on which one is which. And we have our adjuster sleeves and our low misalignment dust boots. Now, these low misalignment dust boots are one of the big things that helps the steer, this steering linkage feel tighter and your whole steering system feel tighter when you're driving because it prevents the tie rod from rolling one way or the other when you go to turn the wheels. Uh, that creates like a decent amount of slop in the steering wheel and this fixes it. But with these is where the extra caution comes in because they go in between the tie rod end and the knuckle, they replace the normal dust boots. And if your knuckles, if your, yeah, if your knuckles have had steering linkage over torqued on them or, you know, wallowed out the holes or something, then the, it'll, the tie rod end, the tapered stud of the tie rod end will need to go further into the knuckle than you know, factory, brand new. And that means you gotta trim these down so that they'll allow the tie rod end to go all the way up in. But we'll get to that in a few. So, start with some anti-seize, which I hate using, but it's so important. And our brush broke, so junk screwdriver it is. This just makes it to where when you have to replace tie rod ends at some point down the road after many, many, many thousands of miles of road debris, you're actually able to get this stuff loose. So, 
So we're gonna start, there's three adjuster sleeves. These are what are called double adjusters. So we're going to thread them all the way in. They're threaded on the outside and on the inside, opposite threads. And I'm not like tightening it to the point where you know it's impacting, it's just faster to use that. This end does not have an adjuster because we really, honestly, this actually only needs one adjuster, but there's not really another option for tube adapters, so it's got two adjusters that can work. This end, we set the, the depth of the tie rod end, you know, thread it in to the, what's called the Y-Link adapter, and then we leave it and all of our toe adjustment is done on the other side here. So we'll get that in set first and we will use the 4136 tie rod end. I'm gonna set this 4133 out of the way. You wouldn't believe how many people open everything up and then read the instructions and realize that there's one different tie rod end. So. Be aware of that. Once again, put the anises on these threads. And these are left-handed thread. So you'll uh, lefty tidy, righty loosey. Doesn't make sense, but. And on this, you'll see there's a, a slot right here. What we're going to do is thread the tie rod end in until the threads go just past the end of the slot and then we're gonna leave it. Pointing it straight up and down. Thread our jam nut down. We'll take our pinch bolt because what keeps this really in place is not the jam nut as much as it is the pinch bolt that squeezes everything together. So took another 4136 tie rod end, putting more anises on. And this will get threaded all the way in to the adjuster sleeve till the threads are buried. Then, when you go to adjust it, you keep the tie rod itself and the tie rod end from moving and you only turn this adjuster sleeve. That way, the tie rod end comes out of the adjuster sleeve at an equal amount that the adjuster sleeve comes out of the tube adapter. Both of these are bottomed out and we will not be making our adjustment here until it's on the truck and it's gonna be pretty towed in. But having this bolted you know, to the knuckles makes it to where this tube doesn't rotate and neither does this, just the adjuster does. Now, we're gonna put our low misalignment dust boots on. To do that, there is a small little uh, like spring ring thing in here that you peel off and pop that off, toss it in the trash. Now we're gonna take these low misalignment dust boots. We're gonna pop the rubber part out of the metal cap. Use a screwdriver to kinda work my way around. 
if we need to trim these, which I would say 50% of the trucks need it. Uh, and I think that number is going up as they get older. Uh, we're gonna trim the top side of this, and all of this is covered on the install instructions, and the bottom side of this. That way, these two shrink together. Push this on, and push that on. Do that on the other side as well. Now, we are going to put the tie rod ends in the drag link, and we're gonna make note of which tie rod end is the oddball that goes right here, so that we don't mix that up, and then we're ready to start assembling it on the truck. This one, I'm gonna leave this goofy uh, like plastic cover for the tie rod end on so that I know that it's the one that goes here. Okay, so we are ready to put the tie rod end in. There's six washers that this comes with and you will use two washers underneath the castle nut on both of the tie rod ends going to the knuckles and the tie rod end going to the pitman arm. And all the washers do is space out the castle nut so that the hole for the cotter pin lines up right where it needs to be. Now we're gonna loosen these and see how we started loosening it and it already dropped down. That means this side at least needs that dust boot trimmed because the tapered stud did not fully seat in the knuckle. Yep, this side did the same. So we're gonna trim these. So far, so good on this side. You know, if you do hit it hard enough, you might be able to get it to come out, but it should not come out with like pretty decent hits with a dead blow and you are not gonna hurt this tie rod by doing that. So now they're fully seated. We know that they're not gonna back the castle nuts off. So we'll torque them down for the third time. And then we'll put our cotter pins in and then put our drag link in. So you guys will remember that we kept this uh, little plastic cover on the one tie rod end that's different and goes in here. So now we will take that off and then this into our pitman arm. The last two. No washers underneath the castle nut of the of the different tie rod end that goes between the drag link and the tie rod. And on these you I like to keep the, uh, you know, the pinch bolt sections pointed up to match the front. Whatever you do, never use an impact gun on steering linkage, at least for installing. We got all the steering linkage on and tested and torqued to spec. So we're good to go there. 
Uh, remember in the instructions, it says to double check that everything is torqued uh, after 50 to 100 miles. So obviously we haven't done that yet, but we will. And we still need to put our Zerk fittings in, which will get like a pump or two of grease as well, just to make sure they're full. And all of the pinch bolts are left loose for now because right now it is probably majorly towed in and uh, the drag link is probably gonna make the steering wheel about you know an entire turn off. So we'll tighten those up once we get wheels and tires on and adjust it and do a, an extra fancy tape measure alignment just so that when we drive it to the alignment shop, it's not you know a complete bear to drive and doesn't prematurely wear tires. And then the alignment shop can get it all dialed in. just gonna use a reference point on the tire over here and use the same reference point on the other side. This is not, you know, going to get it as close as a, an alignment machine can with lasers and all of that, but this will get us close enough to drive it there and not have as weird of, you know, handling and steering conditions. So we'll get these, we'll measure here to the other side and we'll measure up here and adjust our toe based off of that. And we want our toe, especially after it goes to the alignment shop, to be zero. No, uh, no toe in, just zero toe. Wheels straight ahead. That way it doesn't, with a straight axle, you don't want toe in, especially with this setup, because it can do weird things with uh, how it reacts to caster and stuff like that. So we're gonna get this measured up and go from there. Lined up straight with the truck, so it looks like we gotta turn them a little bit that way. And then we'll adjust our drag link. So the only thing to note on this is uh, because you can adjust both sides, it, you want to you know, make a few adjustments on the pitman arm side, a few adjustments on the uh, tie rod side, just so that you don't have one tie rod end like all the way in the tube and the other one way far out. This is the adjustment that you really don't need an alignment machine for because all you're doing is getting your steering wheel straight. The toe is the most important one. Since we got our toe adjustment, you know, where we want it just with the tape measure, we're gonna go ahead and torque down the pinch bolts on the tie rod. 